All right, this is the last section, section 4.4. This one's all about trigonometric equations. You've been doing trig equations for the entire unit, but this one is basically combining everything all together to solve for stuff. As you'll see, we've got a sole purpose today. We're just solving for theta. That's it. My kid's crying in the background. I don't know if you heard that. My kid was crying in the background. So, continuing on, we're just solving for theta here. That's all we're doing today. So here's an equation. Solve cosecant theta equals two. We're gonna solve for theta and then we're gonna have to do some things that we did in 4.3 to look at specifically what are the answers for this. We have a range from zero to two pi. Here's the equation we're given. We need to manipulate this into something that we can actually deal with. So one over sine theta equals two, inverse both sides, sine theta equals a half. All right, this isn't too bad. The reference angle for sine theta equaling a half, remember sine theta is the y value. So look on your unit circle. When is y equal to a half? So my reference angle is pi over six. And because this ratio is positive, we're in quadrant one and two. Therefore, theta one is pi over six because quadrant one is just the reference angle. And for quadrant two, we do pi minus the reference angle. So here are my two angles. That's all I have in the range. So here's my overall theta value. Again, notice the pattern that I'm doing for this. It's gonna be the same for most of the questions. You first get your ratio by itself equal to something. You're gonna look for what is the reference angle and what quadrants are you in. Then taking the reference angle and your quadrants, you're going to solve for the angles in those positions and then try and compare it to the range or get the, the, um, the general solution for that. That's gonna be the process you're gonna do a lot with this. You'll notice you'll, the algebra tricks that we'll use are all things you've seen before, except now applying it to ratios, these trig ratios. So let's try this. So we want the general solution for this one. Again, we're gonna take this equation, rearrange it for the ratio. So just add one to the other side, divide by root three. We're gonna get this into a ratio that we know. So this is gonna be tan theta equals root three. Then we're gonna look for when is, or what's the reference angle for this? So this one's on the unit circle again. So this is pi over three or 60 degrees because we're looking at both degrees and radians. And because it's positive, we're in quadrant one and three. Therefore, theta one or the quadrant in quadrant one, the angle is just the reference angle. Quadrant three is pi plus the reference angle. And again, you can convert that into degrees. So for our general solution, we take this value and notice here I did pi over three and I plus or I added pi n onto this or 60 degrees plus 180 n. Now the question is, why didn't I have two solutions in this case? Because remember the general solution is pi over three or whatever your reference angle is plus a full rotation times n and you do that for both angles. The reason is if you look at your the two angles we're given, if I take pi over three, and if I add n, or pi, sorry, pi onto that, I would then get four pi over three. And then if I added another pi, I would end up with going back and forth between the two angles. So essentially what I'm doing is taking a look at tangent, and I'm realizing if I just do half a rotation, I end up at the other angle. So this is why I didn't do um, pi over three plus two pi n and four pi over three plus two n because I can equate those as the same thing if I just add pi instead of two pi. What is the general solution for this? 
So this might look a little complicated, but if I rearrange this, bring the secants on the same side and the whole numbers to the same side, I just get secant theta equals negative one, which really isn't too bad. Again, turn this into a ratio that we know, which is cos theta. So this would be at the angle of pi. So cos theta being your, your x value. So when is x equal to negative one? There's only one position for that. So with this, we just have this as your solution. We just take pi plus two pi n. So every you've got um, at the negative x axis, you just keep adding a full rotation, you get back to that same point. No, it's not too bad. How about this one? Notice here I am not going to have a exact answer because my ratio is a decimal and it's not a decimal that we're used to seeing. So we're going to take this, the theta, that's our, our reference angle, is just tan negative one of this number. Now, I wanted to specifically point out we're using the positive value for this. If you use the negative, you're not going to get the right reference angle. So just make sure you use the positive value of that. And this is the reference angle is 0 0.1228. So because I have a negative ratio here, we're in quadrant two and four. When I took off the negative, when I did the reference angle, here's where that negative comes into play. It's which quadrant we're in. So this is what I'm looking at. Here's my relationship. So to get theta one, we take the reference angle minus it from pi. To get theta two, again, it's in quadrant four, so we're dealing with this. Now, notice with my range, I'm actually going from negative two pi to positive two pi. So I can find some more angles that are in that range. And it's just going beyond the zero. So I'm going to take theta one and I'm going to subtract two pi. And this is going to get me still within the range. And I'm going to do the same with the theta two. I'm going to subtract two pi from that to get another angle. So these are all the angles that are within the range of negative two pi to two pi. Let's solve this one. Uh, some of you are going to hate this. So this is a quadratic equation. You might not like those. That's too bad. You've, you've seen them a few years now. So what I'm going to do for this, to make it look a little bit easier, I'm going to go cos x equals a. From here, you can see that this equation actually isn't too bad. What two numbers add to negative 3 multiplied to positive 2? So that's going to be a minus one and a minus two. So I've got two solutions. Uh, first, I'm going to plug back in the cos theta in for a, and I've got two solutions. The first one meaning the first bracket equals zero, because if I make one of these brackets equal to zero, the whole thing equals zero. So solve for one. Now we're going to do like we did before. So cos x equals one. There's only one place where that happens, and that's when x equals zero. We have x instead of theta. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't make a difference. Looking at the other part, so cos x minus two equals zero. Solve for cos theta. There is no solution to this. The maximum you can have for the ratio is one. So here's our solution. Therefore, x is just equal to zero. That is the only solution to this problem. Here's another difference of square equation. So again, we're going to let cos, uh, cosecant equal a. So we have a squared minus one equals zero. We get this, plug cosecant back in, and we have, again, two solutions. One where cosecant minus one equals zero. Let's work with this one. So cosecant x equals one. We can put in one over sine theta, solve for sine theta, we just get the same thing. And this occurs at uh, pi over two. Looking at the other half of this equation, go ahead and solve for that. 
substitute in. And we get this. So these are going to be my two answers that are within my range. Try this one. Again, we're getting more and more complicated with this. Substitute, because that's just going to make our lives easier. With this, when we factor it, we'll get 2a minus 1 and a plus 2. I'm assuming by now you can factor, so I'll leave that to you if you don't understand it. Again, plug back in cotangent theta, or x, it should be x, into this. And then we've again got two solutions. So the first bracket, cotangent x equals 1 over 2. Flip that for 10x. And then we're going to solve for this. So this is going to occur in quadrant one and two, or quadrant one and three, because it's a positive ratio. So it looks something like this. And then we need our reference angle. So just take the inverse tan theta equation. And then for quadrant one, it's just reference angle. For quadrant three, it's pi plus that. So here are the solutions for the first bracket. Now I'm going to switch over to the next slide and we'll do the cotangent x plus 2 part of this equation. So cotangent x equals negative 2, which is 1 over negative 2 when you've got tan x. So this ratio is negative, therefore we're in quadrant 2 and 4, so it looks like this. And from that, again, the red lines there represent the, the reference angle, which we solve for here. And then using our knowledge of which quadrants they're in, we use the reference angle and solve for that. So therefore, overall for this question, yes, I know it took a little bit to get there. Our solution between 0 and 2 pi is all four of those numbers. That's our solution for x. I think this is the last example. So I just want to go through again what the process for solving these equations is. I said at the beginning, and I'm just going to repeat it here. So given an equation like this, first what you're trying to do is you want to get a ratio by itself. And the ratios we like to deal with are sine, cosine, tangent. So for example, on this slide here, I solve this equation down to tangent x equals negative 1 over 2 or on the slide before that, 10x equals positive 2. From there, I use the ratio, whether it's positive or negative, to determine which quadrant I'm in. Then I solve for the reference angle, and with that reference angle and the knowledge of which quadrant I'm in, I find the solutions at that in those quadrants. So you're going to have to use basically all the previous lessons and combine them all into this. So that's the end of chapter four. Hopefully you enjoyed this one where there was no graphing and no transformations, but we're gonna get into that next unit. So don't worry, it'll come back. But that is the end of chapter four. All right, you've made it to the end. I don't know if you found them interesting or not. This last one you will find probably the most interesting. And that is the fact that every single random fact that I've given you previously in this lesson have all been false. That's right, I've been teaching you false information. And look at how easily you believe them. I'm assuming you all believe them, unless you were clever enough to go beyond that. Every single thing that I said was false. And I can go through each of those. So goldfish don't have a three second memory. They actually have three months memory, so they can remember something for three months. Yes, they have proven that one. Um, shaving thickens your hair. It doesn't. It might seem like it, but it actually doesn't. Um, the tongue one about the different spaces for the different senses, that one's interesting because I was actually taught that in high school or in middle school. I don't know if you learned that in science class. Your whole tongue actually senses all of the different tastes. So there is no specific part for a specific thing. <laughs> the one about spiders. The, a spider has zero reason to go into your mouth. There's no food there, so why would it venture in your mouth? If that freaked you out, I'm sorry, it's not true. And about the, the penny or your 25 piaster piece falling and killing someone, the terminal velocity is definitely not that high to kill someone. It might sting, but it's, it's not gonna kill someone. So that is an interesting fact as to gullibility and don't believe everything that you hear or see on the internet because it might not be true. Go and check your facts. Fact check. So there you go. That is the very end of your random false facts that I've been giving you 
for this entire unit.